Hey, thanks for joining us for What's On in Southern Ostrobotnia. I'm Mark Wiltshire. Hey, and I'm Glenn Murray. Uh, and in each episode, we'll be highlighting some interesting events and activities taking place across the region of Etelapokimar in the coming months. There'll be lots of info, don't worry, we've made notes and we'll include all the links in the episode details for this show and also in a separate blog post on nordicexplorerproductions.com. We'll also have a guest join us to talk about their event, but more of that coming later. So Glenn. Why don't you tell us about the first event you found? Hey, yeah. So my my event is a spectator sport. It's actually at the Rabi Keskos, which is the trot track in the middle of Sainioki. So it's a horse event. It's the Sainioki Horse Show at Rabi Rata, Rabi Dia 9 in Sainioki between the dates of the 17th to the 20th, 2021. There'll be horse jumping at this event with heights between 70 to 140 centimetres, which is quite high. Uh, Finland's top riders will be there. There'll also be street food uh, at the venue and you can explore the expo area and because they'll have uh, stuff happening in the there in an expo type situation. Um, it includes things like rabbit racing, which is quite, <laughs> quite an odd thing, <laughs> but uh, there'll be pony rides for the kids and there's an evening party to... Uh, to follow at the the event at night um, the price is 10 euro or it's free for under 10 year olds the website and the info will be listed in the blog post and will be in the description of the video below uh, you can find most of this info there so where are we going to next mark can you believe it, Glenn? I found another museum. Oh <laughs> what is this? I this is this is something a bit different. I say that every every episode. Um, I found the Yulinkoskin Sakopuisto, which means the Yulinkoski Electricity Park. Uh, it's in Gorica, uh, in Yulinkoskin Deer one hundred and twenty, and it's basically opening for the summer season right now, uh, at the beginning of June until early August. It's basically a museum of electrical implements and information technology. Um, a wide collection of radios, telephones, gramophones and computers, like old home computers and things like Just that. Just like you, mate, stuck in the past. <laughs> <laughs> well, that, that has maybe been the case. That's why I like museums so much. <laughs> um, this place is set in beautiful Oakland countryside with a one and a half kilometre walk alongside the river to a larval. So it's a place where you can have a rest, light a fire and grill some of those traditional Finnish makara before starting your return journey. It's good price as well. It's five euros for adults. It's two euros for retired people and students. And there's also discounts for larger groups of people as well. Website and other links with the pictures of the nature trail and whatever are in the are in the blog post to follow. So uh, I guess I'll follow on with uh, another event, a live event. It's actually coming up, and you if you haven't seen it all around, posted up all around on the roads everywhere, we'll let you know about it now. It's a live entertainment event. It's Circus Tahti, right? Uh, so the location of this event, this event will be in Oimahali Kenta in Seinäjoki. And it'll be between the dates of the 12th of, till the 13th of this month. So that's a circus pitching up in town next to the swimming hall, right? It is, yeah, yeah. And they, they, they're only here for a couple of days and they, geez, they must get good at packing tents up because <laughs> <laughs> they were just in Natapus like a day ago. So they're, so they're moving around the area yeah, quite quickly. Yeah, okay. quite quickly, yeah. yeah. But they're in San Yorki, so uh, the duration of the show is around two hours, including all the intervals. The tent has heating. Not that uh, we need any more heating. Not, not, not right now. No, no, no it's actually, uh, we've actually had some heat for once in this country. That's why I've got this hat on to keep yeah, the well, sun off my hat. I've got this hat on to actually keep the sweat out of my face. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, but the program is suitable for all ages. Uh, attention, we use, they, they use uh, like live music effects and stuff, which could be quite loud. So they, uh, they're telling us to maybe maybe take some headphones or sorry headphones some earmuffs for the younger younger uh children so that they don't have some hearing damage uh 
the prices depend on what type of uh, seating you take. The, the seating, the ringside seating, A, B or C ringside seating, right up against the action is 26 euro for an adult and 22 euro for a child. And for the, the back seating up the back, which I think is maybe a little better because you don't end up in the show. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or getting squirted by water by the clowns. And, and you know, you get to see everything properly. But that there starts at 23 euro per adult and 19 euro for, for children, which is quite, quite good. Uh, the box office or the ticket office, it opens an hour before the show if you want to buy it from the venue. But you can also buy the tickets from Ticketmaster on, online also. The ticket office takes cash and most bank cards and credit cards as payment. Uh, the circus kiosk only takes cash, unfortunately. So make sure you take cash if you're going to get some of the muck or something to drink. Yeah. The website can be found at circustahti.fi and we'll share most of the links and the contact information in the blog posts and the details. Very good. A little bit more exciting. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's an all age one for, for everybody. So not just those of us stuck in the pub. Thanks, Glenn. Let's hear from this week's guest. Last episode, I talked about Koskin Corbin Museum opening, and this time we've been joined by Jakob Koskin Corbin, who's going to tell us about an upcoming event that they have over there. Over to you, Jakob. Thanks, Mark. So here at Koskin Corbin, we are crazy about saunas. And here in our garden, we have three outdoor saunas. There's one giant sauna for 30 people, and a old smoke sauna right behind me, and our newest addition, a actual whiskey barrel sauna. And we are having open sauna evenings starting after Johannes. So the, and that will be on Wednesdays. So the first one will be on the 30th of June, Wednesday, and they will be running throughout July until, until August. And every, everybody can come. There's a small sauna fee of 10 euros, which includes admission to the saunas. And also the ticket price includes our very special sauna outfits for rent for the duration of the sauna visit. They are something special and everybody, everybody can wear them at the sauna. And yeah, and we also will have uh, our bar and terrace open during those evenings and some, something to eat eat also those those will be very special and nice evenings to experience some Finnish or Kosken Korvan sauna culture. And uh, you can read more about it from our website, which is trahteri.fi or search us in Facebook or Instagram with Kosken Korvan Trahteri. And also I have a very special announcement and this is the first time I haven't announced it yet. So uh, during July, we will also introduce a new, a fourth sauna to our lineup, which will be a mobile sauna, and it will be something, something completely different. And we'll tell you more about that a bit later. So yeah, I hope to see every one of you to experience some sauna, sauna culture here at Kosken Korva. Thanks, Jaco. So I've also made some podcasts about Trattari and you can find the Explore Finland radio show in your podcast player and on YouTube. Right, Glenn, what's your next event? Uh, my, my next event is another uh, one that's actually posted on roadside signs. This isn't from the Airbnb calendar this time. Have you been doing all your research, just driving I, around town? I have been driving okay. around and just, just because it's summertime and everyone's starting to put, put their events out there on the road. But for all the foreigners out there that might not be able to read these signs or don't know what these are, that's that's the whole idea of taking this and putting it in this information and finding that information to put it in the area where you can all find it. But the next event is actually a, uh, a market event. Um, the the Kansain Valley Set Suri Markenat or the International Grand Market. It's going to be take place where all of Senioki's events take place on the street. It Kirko Katu, where, where Tango Markina takes place, where Race and Rock, right Rock takes part. Every every single event seems to take part on this this uh, Kirko and Katu. So you won't you won't miss it for sure because it'll be the only road that's closed in most likely all of the town. And you were telling me earlier that this this is quite a significant street for the town. It is because um when they hold big 
fair, big, big events. Like, you know, a few years back, uh, every year the, the uh, military parade goes around Finland to a different town. And when it came to here, it went down that parade, that, that road, and specifically that road because it's right next to the center park. And not only is it right next to the center park, but uh, every single light post along the route has actually a flag post on it so they can put like the Finnish flag and that in there. So it's, it's kind of where all the events seem to end up in that street. So it, you'll, you won't miss it for sure. Everybody knows it. It's got events on it every year yeah. and it's always the same street. So that's between the 10th and the 13th of this month from Thursday to Sunday. There'll be many, many different things happening. There's markets from stall, stall markets from like 25 different countries and they'll be selling things like food, arts and crafts and all the things in between there. There will also be a child-friendly area in this event for uh, the market. will also be in other centres throughout the summer 21, depending on the corona situation. The price is free, but you need to take into account the money when going to the stalls. Obviously, they're not free. Yeah. And did you go to the event a couple of years ago? When yes, you yes. I, I went there and got some Aussie burgers. And, I did. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I actually, I did the same. We, we went a couple of times. Uh, once we had um, Mexican food and another time we had uh, an ostrich burger and a crocodile burger, I think. So it was, uh, there's some really interesting um, exotic stuff to be found. Yeah, yeah. Um, like like anything, uh, this is a traveling market, so it, it will be. It will show up all over. There's there's the internet site and all that. We will post in the description below. And if you end up missing the Sanyoki one, you might be able to catch one of the other towns market in the future in summer. So, yeah, it's, yeah, it's worth it's worth checking out if you can. And, yeah, yeah. Uh, it's, it's good fun. Just another traveling one. I've found participation sport. Now, this is evening guided kayaking in Atari. Oh, wow. Um, so there's two more dates available, Monday the 14th of June and Monday the 21st of June. Um, if you want to search for it online, you should huh, you should check out the show notes because the name is quite quite long in Finnish, but it's Suomen Selan Samuel Lloyd Joiden Alkukesan 2021 Ilta Wow. Exactly. Check it out on our web, on our website, on our blog. Each week, it's two hours kind of expedition with a guide to show you the way. And I think it's a really lovely way to check out Atari's scenery on these long, white summer evenings that we get mm, at the moment. Yeah. The kayaks are, per, are suitable for persons of size small to XL. I'm not quite sure. Yeah. <laughs> that, that's not, a, that's not, not sure. very scientific, is no, it? No, it's not scientific at all. Uh, it's, <laughs> but they say it's also a, a, appropriate for uh, kids aged sort of 13 years and up. Yeah. Uh, but any children under the age of 18 need the consent of the parent or guardian course, yeah. to go there. And price is not bad, actually. It's 20 euros to hire a kayak. That's, that's quite... It. That's cheap. Yeah, with a, with a guide as well. With a guide and a kayak. With a kayak alone, that's usually closer to the 100 mark. Mm. And, I think so, anyway. And, and what's even cheaper is if you've got a kayak, you can just rock up and join the join the tour and get yeah. shown around yeah, exactly, for free. Yeah. So the best place to find information for this, there's a Facebook event. And again, the link will be there in the blog post. Yeah. Um, have you got something a bit more exciting for us again? I, I love my high team sports. You uh, do, don't you? Yeah, so we've got something that's quintessentially Etelä Pohjanma. Now this this here I've been hitting Seinjoki pretty pretty often. Um, it's it is because this is the capital and summer has started. It's a bit easier to find things to do in Seinjoki, but this one here is a motorsport. It's po the Pohjanma Rally. So. Right now, we don't actually know where the route is because you will be told the route closer to the date because they're afraid that people will go out there and try and race the track or practice a track before the rally. So it could be sort of anywhere in Etelapohema. It Pohemma. could be anywhere in Etelapohema. So this is the Pohema rally. It might end up in Evi-Yarvi, but I wouldn't assume so. But but you never know because it is the Pohema rally. They don't like giving out the, the racetrack uh, information and the special stage information, but only before the race they only do it a couple of days before it and when they have the official test dr drive days um because they're afraid 16 year olds or whatever p 
people have just got their licenses or get out there and give it a go and crash into a tree or something. And, and these roads are used as actual roads during the week. So they try and keep that under hush hush until the day comes up. But it's at multiple locations throughout Southern Ostrobotnia. The, however, the race HQ, it, it's the same every year. It's Hotel Sorsland Peso out in uh, Dorinova. The dates that it will be happening is the 18th of the 6th to the 19th of the 6th. Uh, thanks to the calm corona situation, the Southern Australian Rally, people have assessed the special stages on Service Park uh, follow, following the race. So they, they'll keep up on what they're allowed to do, judging by what, what the corona situation is. So whether the, whether the special, how many people are allowed within the certain areas of the special stages. Like spectators, you mean? Yeah, the yeah, spectator okay. areas. Oh, you might not have, you might only be allowed to have some certain amount in. Even though it's outdoors, it's still small areas that they recommend to watch from. So there might be some restrictions, but at, as the moment, at that has it now, there's no restrictions because we seem to be in a good uh, area right now. But um, that's that goes for Hotel Sauce and Pesa as well because this, it seems to be the hub. They want to try and keep that for the drivers and the officials. And they don't want to add more people that are going to add more strain. Oh, no. You know what I mean? Like, oh, uh, we've got too many people here. We've got to leave a couple of drivers out on the street because we've got all the spectators in here. They want that, that area to mainly be for them. As of now, everyone can go there, but they'll keep up on the situation. Uh, yeah, so you see the expanses of the Pohyanma through. This, this will happen, uh, what is it? A week before midsummer, yeah, it's happening a week before midsummer, so that'll be nice. Uh, the Pokemon Rally, this section of the rally is actually the second leg of the FIA European Rally Trophy for Scandinavia two thousand twenty one, which is held, I believe, in Denmark, Sweden, and Finland, and this is the second leg of that race. The price for Rally Pack, which means you go, you can buy a ticket and go to any special stage you want, is twenty five euro. And for one, just one special stage, you can pay 10 euro per ticket. So it depends, you know, if you want to only watch one, 10 euro is a good saving. Yeah, there's no point in paying 25. If you just, if you want to do three or four, you're better off buying the rally pass. You might not make it to all the special stages, but if you're going to do more than, I'd say one, uh, you probably should. If you're doing so, about three, I would, I would buy the package so this could be three different stages on one day and you go and check out yeah. one and then move to the next one yeah. and that's what yeah. the rally pass allows you yeah to do. it just okay. allows okay. you to keep entering each stage whereas if you've only got one special stage ticket <laughs> and it was stage one say stage 10 the next day is the same stage you are only allowed to access it for that stage one on the day previous i i checked out the website and on the english language page they didn't have the information about where to buy tickets so uh, it is on the finnish language yeah site. so so when you go to the the pokemonrally.fi leave it in finnish and stay in the finnish page and just use google translate because it'll tell you how much all the all the actual monetary information mm of how, what you have to pay and all the stuff on the finish. The finish page has all the information just translated on Google Translate. Uh, the rally packages and their locations, you can buy it from Neste Tervajoki, ST1 Ulistaro, Neste Yope, Yopi, Seine Yoki, uh, Neste Yalastuli, Yalasjarvi, Neste Perseine Yoki, Shell Tampari, Lapua, Rengas, Rengas de Auto Darvike, Saint Aoki, uh, Hotel Source and Pesser in Saint Aoki, and Sio Boisto Hu Hulimi lie here. And you yeah. set yourself a challenge there. Oh, I did, yeah. <laughs> you, and, you, and you beat that challenge. Yeah, yeah, but there's only a few in there that I've never really <laughs> heard before. But the information will be in the, in the yeah. Are you going to go to the rally? Yeah, I will. I always go. I go to the the world rally championship yeah. and this one this one here is a bit better because it's in our it's not in Yavascula it's yeah, from yeah. hours away you can actually just come here and do it so and you'll probably see a guy looking a bit like this and if you do see him go and say hi and let him know that you've watched or listened to the show yeah yeah okay let's calm it down a little bit um I've been a little bit self-indulgent here because I've chosen an event that I'm organizing <laughs> but hey why not it's um it's a picnic yeah, we called it a very Finnish midsummer picnic here in Sainioki 
um, up at Gurukasiarvi, which is the, the beach and, and lake next to Senioki Hospital. And there's a, a, little, a little place there called Luon Totalo Capaliko. Now, it's on Wednesday the 23rd of the 6th, that's just before everyone starts to move away for the midsummer holiday uh, and probably for their fall summer holidays. And it's been organised by the association that I'm one of the founders of called Etelapohyaman Wise Aru. And we want to uh, encourage as many uh, Finns, immigrants, people, people that have moved to this area to come there to meet with us, because that's kind of the aims of WISE, and, and to make new friends and to do a bit of networking, but mostly to, um, to eat makara and play some, play some summer games. Yeah. Hence, and, and so the, we, we're going to have this mulku game. A very traditional Finnish game where you stand up some skittles and you have to knock them down with a well, with another lump of wood, yeah. really. And yeah. um, we want to get people playing together and meeting. And we it is a picnic, but we are going to provide some uh, makara. There's a small murky there next to the next to the beach that we've rented out. So if the weather turns a little bit, people can shelter. And the fact that we've organised a picnic at midsummer means it's bound to rain. So we'll probably need that murky. Um, it's a free event. Obviously, bring your own picnic food, uh, bring your own drinks, um, but register beforehand so that we know the numbers. The website is wise.fi, W-I-I-S-E dot F-I, um, and we'll put some other links in the, uh, in the notes to the Capaligo Facebook page so you can see what that place is all around. Now, before we wrap up this show, Glenn, you've got a cheeky special mention. Yeah, you? yeah, I've got a bit of a special mention because um, uh, we're a bit of a tight-knit community in the Munak area. Munak and Tier in Munak, uh, um, it's known for being a very nice, windy, very long, long road. And a lot of cars, a lot of old cars seem to cruise it a lot of old cars in summer when the weather's good or a lot of motorbikes go for a ride down it we've had a little kiosk oh such a beautiful little kiosk just been brand newly built and they've just launched and opened uh, this past weekend and they they have at seven seven o'clock upward till one in the morning they serve alcohol which it's beautiful it's in this little picturesque Halfway, bet- halfway down the road from either end, I'd say, around about halfway, yeah, you'll see the signs, Kioski, Munak and Kioski, if you want to search for it on anything else. Uh, but they've got great hot dogs. Oh, my God, the price. They're just so cheap, and they're such a good, good hot dog. They're nice cooked and good food. They have vegan options as well. They've got ice creams, drinks. They've got everything. and They've got alcohol-free beer so that they can serve that before not seven o'clock at night, but they have an alcohol license from seven till uh, one in the morning, which is great because they will actually have a little TV that they pulled out and we were watching the ice hockey the other night, Germany versus uh, Finland. It's almost like you've got a little pub there. We do, it's out, yeah. Out in, it's really out in the sticks from Sainioki and, and you don't get many bars or pubs just no. in places like that. So this this, nice this thing place. is absolutely beautiful. There is no indoor at all. It's literally a little... little uh, little kiosk and it's in this beautiful green luscious field with a car park and everything it's overlooking you know the the fielded area yeah. it's in a very nice set area it's the, they've got umbrellas up it's cool the deck is brand new everything's there they've got a little tv if you want to watch a game or something you just ask them if it's not raining because they haven't got a roof over where the tv is so they have to pull it in and out but yeah. if it's a fine day and you want to watch some sport oh just go for it and you can sit there and just drink beer all you like. And it's it's beautiful, absolutely pristine. Like I said to all the car clubs and all the motorbike riders out there, if you want a really nice drive or ride, it's a very, very windy, very long, windy, windy road. And I know riding all these roads on a motorbike in a straight line is boring. So Mornock and Tier is good. But be aware that this is a little area where there's a lot of kids, so don't go flying down there like you're anything. But if you want to go for a cruise with your mates and go and pick up a good hot dog or something nice to eat, some pulled pulled pork or a sausage or even a vegan vegan hot dog, yeah, you go in there and 
grab one. Oh, it's beautiful. It sounds like it's another place that people might find you sometime during oh, this. They'll find me. I've already been there like three or four times okay. on, <laughs> on one one day you're, already. You're a regular. Yeah, oh, just on the way home. I'm like, oh, yeah. I'm going to pull over and get a Coke here. It's bloody it's, it's hot at the moment. So it's perfect because we've seen, we've had a lot of old cars come in there, a lot of motorbike riders, a lot of, I've never seen more bicycles on the road in my little village than there ever in my life. I've never seen that many. And it has really brought it, our town of, alive it's just beautiful that was quite a long cheeky little mention wasn't it you can see how excited Glenn is about this about this place but that's all for this episode thank you for joining us remember to press that subscribe button wherever you wherever you found us subscribe to the show as we've said earlier you'll find links to all the events we've mentioned in the episode description Uh, the easiest place to find me and Glenn is nordicexplorerproductions.com where we have links to our previous episodes and also to our social media profiles. That said, you can find me, Mark Wiltshire, or Explore Finland on Facebook or Instagram, or Glenn as The Nordic Tourist on YouTube and Instagram. We'd love to hear your thoughts about this show and previous episodes. We'd also love to hear about any events that are coming up in southern Ostrobotnia that you know about, so reach out to us via our website. But until the next episode to all you etelapokulize it moro epa oh.